Hey everybody, welcome to Mammoth Interactive's YouTube channel. First of all, I want to thank you for watching this video. And remember that this channel doesn't do Patreon, instead we sell our digital courses down below. And every single dollar that we get from the products you buy below goes into making more content. The best way to help out this channel and Mammoth Interactive is to subscribe to Mammoth Interactive's huge library of content. Get thousands of hours and hundreds of courses for a low, low price down below. We have a monthly option and a yearly option. Thanks for listening and I'll see you in the video. Okay, we're in Blender here. And as you can see, we are going to create some simple models for our uh, VR game. Now, first off, we're gonna start with uh, some simple low to mid poly uh, melee weapons that we can just uh, export out here and import them into Unity. Now, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete the lights and cameras since we're not gonna be rendering anything in Blender itself because we're gonna be, again, uh, exporting them out here and importing it in Unity. Now, let's go ahead and set our sort of perspective right here. Uh, I'm gonna switch it from user perspective over into the orthographic uh, perspective. It makes it easier for us to sort of select pieces or vertexes. Uh, I'm gonna click on the number key five. And let's go into the side view. Let's click on three. Now with the side view here, I am going to select our object, go into edit it, it, it edit mode uh, by clicking tab control R and uh, creating a, a center edge loop right here With that let's go into uh, face mode by clicking control tab let's go into wireframe click Z click B to select or box select uh, the side of the cube right here it can be either or I'm just going to select the uh, right side because uh, my mouse was close to that side. Let's delete that by clicking X, delete faces, and there you go. We are left with just half of our cube here. Now, the reason why I deleted half is because I wanted to use the mirror modifier. Mirror modifier just makes it easier for us to create things because we only had to worry about working on one side. As you can see, nothing happens because uh, our mirroring is only mirroring the x-axis, which we don't need. Uh, this is the y-axis. As you can see down here, this little corner bit right there. Turn on the y-axis, turn on clipping, and there you go. We have a mirror uh, of our, uh, our uh, cube right here. I'm gonna go into Control R, add in a edge loop down at the bottom. And we are going to, I'll just grab these guys for now. Let's uh, create our uh, pickaxe right here. Extrude this outwards. Actually, let's undo that. I want to use the uh, snap mode, which makes it easier to, you know, move things instead of like, uh, in kind of micro movement instead. To turn on snap mode by clicking shift tab. And as you can see, the little magnet here, which represents the snap is turned on. Uh, our settings is set to increments. So when we extrude outwards, it should kind of snap towards certain areas. Uh, let's say like this far seems pretty decent. We'll leave it at that for now. And Right here, we're gonna sort of create the pole of our pickaxe. Gonna go to the top view, clicking on seven. Let's go into wireframe. Gonna click A to deselect those pieces that we sort of uh, selected. Let's grab the sort of center bits right here, these vertexes. Let's move it just slightly outwards, like so. And I am going to go into uh, face mode. Let's go back to top. Click on B, select these, I guess, four faces right here, as you can see right there. We're going to go and click on Extrude, Scale, Shift Z. So it's not scaling on the Z axis because I don't want it to affect the Z axis right there. But like this far seems okay. And I am going to extrude this scale on the Z axis outwards. So like this far for now. The top part is just gonna be a little 
little nub right there. And the bottom, we can just simply go to the side view and just drag it all the way to however long you want your uh, pickaxe to be. I'll make it like, uh, I guess, four grids in length. Let's see if it's uh, touching the bottom. Almost. There you go. We got four grids in length of our pickaxe. Now we just have to slightly fix up the center point right here. I'm going to scale this down about like this much. And you know what? I am going to duplicate this, this pole right here and move it, click M into the second layer. We can use that sort of base structure later on if we we're creating additional sort of uh, uh, melee weapons. Actually, in fact, we could even uh, update it later on, make it even better. Uh, for now, let's just go ahead and move this, let's say about like this far down, Control R, I'm gonna add in a few edge loops, let's say three. And we are gonna move this upwards to sort of simulate that little curvature on the pickaxes right there. And there you go, we have simple pickaxe. Uh, should probably change up the pole as well to give it a nice sort of a handle grip area. I'm gonna add in like, I don't know, an edge loop right here. And Maybe I'll move it down. We'll click G, Let's move it say about like this far, scale it inwards. And yeah, I can, I guess, round out the bottom, make it a little bit more, I guess, grippable. Let's add a edge loop, or not edge loop, let's extrude this bottom. I'm gonna extrude it, extrude down, sort of push it inwards have this nice sort of uh, a slight curve right there. Let's add in another edge loop down here, push this in, and there you go. A more pickaxe looking like uh, object now. Slightly gonna maybe move these guys a little bit down and extrude this upwards, scale it a little bit. Give a nice bevel over there so it's not, you know, really perfectly sharp and flat. And our pickaxe is looking pretty good. Oop, let's deselect that. Maybe scale this a little bit on the x axis as well. And sharpen it just a tiny little bit more. Now, our uh, whole structure is kind of flat on one side could turn on the proportional editing here so it grabs not everything but a little bit It'll affect sort of the um, nearby points Let's turn on that or you can just click on O just click on O instead click O and we're gonna scale on the x-axis gonna ex sort of push things out I'm gonna use the scroll wheel to kind of select the areas that it's gonna affect which as you can see is that much. So it's not perfectly just pulling out one point, it's gonna pull out like all these other sort of lines with it. But yeah, there you go. We have a decent looking pickaxe. Simple to create, uh, fast and pretty easy. Let's get an X axis, fix this part. And there you go, simple pickaxe. And let's maybe take a short break. We'll come back to this later. Add on some, uh, uh, I guess, some materials, some color onto it. If there's any things that we want to fix, we can do that. But yeah, for now, let's take a short break. Come back to this later. Okay, we're back with our pickaxe here. Uh, looking at it for a little bit, I feel like we could probably add a little bit more weight to the top here, because right now it looks kind of small. And bottom section, I'll probably fix things a little bit more. Let me drag this down closer to the bottom. And let's also add in a, another additional sort of extrusion here. I'm gonna cap this off scale this. Oh, let's uh, maybe turn off proportional editing here. Just click on O, scale this section, and just pull this down. And we have sort of this 
I guess, a, a closing off point right here. Uh, just further rounds it. Double click G, kind of slide it across top, and there you go. And same with the sort of uh, base over here. I feel like we could probably put this in a little bit more. Let's get this inwards. And I am going to grab the back ends right here. Let's push this outwards, make it a little bit larger here. Uh, push it out, forward, double click G, make this thin down here. And as you can see, it just gives it a little bit, slightly more weight to our uh, pickaxe here. Adding control B, bevel this bit to make it a little bit more smooth. Uh, I can do the same thing down here, control B, smooth things out, just a tiny little bit. And there you go, we can use this as one of our melee weapons. Uh, now I'm just going to go ahead and add in some of the materials for our uh, weapon itself. Now first off, I'm going to maybe organize this, let's call this the pickaxe. Pick axe. Pick axe. Oh, what's this uh, second piece right here? Hmm. I'll delete that. Uh, there you go. It's just one object because uh, there shouldn't be anything else. Oh wait, never mind. Uh, I deleted the. Uh, additional piece that we sort of duplicated into the other side. Uh, oh well, we've updated the pole, so might as well just duplicate it again. And let's, uh, let's move this into the second layer. There you go. And let's make the materials for our uh, pickaxe here. Let's uh, create a new material. Let's call this the Pick, axe, head, or I guess metal will probably work. Iron, what's that? Cast iron? Let's just call it iron. Iron color, uh, gray. And let's create another one. Let's call this the metal, or not metal handle. Let's call it wooden handle. Wooden handle wooden wooden stock wooden handle yeah I could use wooden handle wooden handle and we are going to just click on our object here go into edit mode let's select everything and I'm gonna assign everything to the wooden handle for now gonna slightly change colors first uh, so we can differentiate things a little bit easier and the top part let's go into face mode I'm gonna select these bits and pieces uh, let's go into the side view wireframe click Z let's click B select all those faces that were missing and let's go back into object select those bottom pieces over here assign them to the iron color and there you go I'm going to have to darken this and make it a little bit more gray to kind of look like a, I guess, typical pickaxe. Yeah, there you go. A simple pickaxe that we can use for our uh, melee weapon. Uh, if there's anything else that you want to fix up, you can go ahead and do that. But for now, we've uh, pretty much completed our pickaxe here. And we can move on to the next melee weapon, such as a uh, fire axe, any type of axe, really. Uh, can use that yeah uh thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video hey everyone thanks for watching this course if you want to watch the rest of the course the link is down below not only we get the access to this course but you'll get access to a lot of other courses in a huge bundle and it's on sale today so buy it before the sale ends thanks for watching and i'll see you in another video